Hey everyone, Trollbender back with Trolls Tech. We're here at the Black Octagon for some more GPU modding. This time we are modding the GeForce RTX Galax Black General OC. It's the RTX 3080. We're gonna put a AliExpress $9.65 copper mod on the memory. Yeah, here are my temps prior. As you can see, the GPU temperature, junction, and hot spots are all really good. I'm running Furmark in the background, so these are all really good. No point in actually doing this mod whatsoever. Message! Probably gonna regret it later. We ran some games in the background as well, did some benchmarks with Cyberpunk 2077, and temps a little bit lower even than fur mark. So let's get busy on this unnecessary copper mod. Yeah. First thing we gotta do is uh, get this thing out of the cage. I have a vertical mount cage to alleviate pressure on the card and because it looks pretty goddamn cool. Yeah. Anyway, you can see the uh, copper mod there came uh, pretty quickly from AliExpress and uh, it's flat, smooth. I don't think uh, we're gonna have any problems with this. All right, here's our beautiful card out of the cage. Let's start unscrewing this bad boy. We're gonna speed this up for you. You don't need to see every screw turn. So enjoy the music while I check my text messages. All right, this has got a nice back plate on it. It is aluminum, aluminum. and it's uh, quite sturdy, quite nice. I, I really like this card for as rare as it is. It performs amazing and it looks beautiful. It's got a lot of metal on it. It's super freaking heavy, but hey, it's a 3080, right? Good luck finding cards these days with China taking 4090s and 3090s and 3080s and stripping them all up. Anyway, that's a different video. All right, we got to get the uh, back of the GPU mount off of here. It actually took me a long time to figure out how to open this card. I, I, I was an idiot, but uh, the PCB pulls up from the heatsink, not the heatsink pulling off from the PC. It's, it's really weird. Uh, I didn't include any of that footage. All right, we gotta pull off these two power connectors, one for the fan, one for the actual, well, I guess they're both for fan, right? I don't know. I think they're both for fans. Anyway, quite a small PCB on these 3080s, but as you can see, there are a lot of chokes and a lot of business going on in this board, all the memory modules. So we're gonna wipe this clean. You can use swabs, you can use uh, decent paper towels, not the kind that'll just shred right up and we're gonna get all of this old gunk off of here. The old memory pads, those thermal pads. Uh, hindsight, I wish I would have measured these, but I didn't have anything to measure them with. Uh, eyeballing isn't always the best process, as you will soon find out. So we're using some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush, and just to get out all the nasty bits in there. And it looks pretty clean. It's not a bad looking car. Look at that smooth, shiny mirror finish. I like it. All right. So we're using Arctic thermal pads. We got some one mils here and some Gi lids. I got some three millimeters. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need those. Turns out I probably don't and didn't. I already know what's gonna happen anyway. So more fast action removal. This is quite the heat sink and fan cooler here. This is a block, a chunk of chunk of cool and love here. It's very tedious to get all this stuff off of here and you have to be careful not to lose shit inside the heat sink there. It's not, not fun, not easy to get out. You want to be careful to use plastic as much as you can against this and not scrape up the aluminum. Um, all that is aluminum and they attach to the heat sinks under there. All right, we're using these, uh, this thermal tape, which is an absolute bitch to get the plastic off of there. It, it's really hard to work with. All right, look at that, a quick little flash of the, the copper mod on there. Everything looks really flush 
and I don't foresee any problems at this point in the process. Uh, the memory is covered. The copper goes straight flush with that GPU and the border around the GPU. So I, I don't see how this would be an issue at all. So we'll continue cleaning this and putting on um, the hard to install thermal tape. <laughs> So we're removing and putting tape on, new tape on, removing, putting new tape on, getting all the little nasty bits everywhere. That yellow glow you see in the center of the heat sink is just my wall reflecting off of it. It's actually just straight aluminum. There's no copper center or anything like that. So more of the uh, almost impossible to put on thermal tape. All one mil should fit just fine. And we'll uh, move on to the PCB and that copper mod there. Not a bad design at all. I really like it, to be honest. For nine bucks, my last copper mod cost 40. So same piece of metal, pretty much the same weight and size. This is just a little, a little bit different. So we need to put on the thermal paste. Actually, no. Next step here is Kapton tape. We want to put the Kapton tape in between any, any crevices where that copper may touch or if there's a barb or any intolerance in the manufacturing process that would lead it to arc on any of those. Some of those are, are higher voltage and will fry the entire card upon copper touching it and arcing everything out. So Kapton tape, Kapton tape. Capped on tape. Say it once, say it twice. Turn down the charm and remember. Capped on. And that will insulate any electronics from that copper. And I think I did a pretty decent job here as well. I, I, I don't think I overdid it and I don't think I underdid it. I got all the areas where the copper is actually going to touch. Looks pretty good. A little mustardy. Like my wall. But it's all right. All right. Another fit. So remove them little bits. It looks good. It is absolutely flush. I mean, I don't even see more than a micron or so of difference. And I think this is going to go quite well at this point. So let's get all this thermal paste on there. We're using some MX4 on the memory modules and on the GPU. And let's sync that on there and press it in real good. Press out that paste on the memory modules. So they're nice and cool. Like ice. All right. And some more thermal paste to contact all the areas of the heatsink. Now, if you're keen, you can see at this very point why none of this actually works. I'll give you a hint. It's in the upper right corner. And if you look at the copper, you may see, you may be keen and figure out why this is going to go horribly wrong. And my thousand dollar video card will become no more. All right, give it its final little coffin presses here. Yeah, all right. You want to do this in a circular motion so that it attaches that GPU to the heatsink evenly. Give it a little polish. Let's reinstall that nice aluminum backplate. Aluminium. Yes. Fast motion. Go, go, go. All right. Screw, 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 screw. A little polish. And that backplane, we got to put that on there. Spinny, spinny, round and round. Get this bad boy reassembled back into its little cage here. These cages are great. You gotta mod your case a little if, if depending on the case you have to use these cages, but it's been a godsend. I really enjoy it. It looks really good too. Check out my uh, 3070 video to see my case and how a card will look in it. Because right now, I just don't have the heart. So you think it's party time now. All right, time to install that card. But 
Yeah. Everything goes to hell. And my card temperatures went straight into the sun the second I turned this on. So, if you're wondering what happened, I put the card in my machine and I turned it on. It made it into Windows. The fan spun up immediately to 100% and before I could even get a temperature reading, aside seeing 100 Celsius immediately, the machine shut down. The card has not returned to normal. The temps are wild. I know the problem and I'll demonstrate here. If you can see in this particular portion of the video, you'll notice that the heatsink has a border and a recess. And if you look at the PCB, you notice it matches up. That heatsink actually goes down over that border of the GPU. Any intolerance in the size of the thermal wear or the thermal pads causes an issue. In this particular case, the copper itself was in the way. It was preventing that heatsink from coming down completely over the border of that GPU and making full contact with the GPU die. So I got rid of the copper heatsink, the copper sh cut. So I got rid of the memory mod for that card and put everything back the way it was. Unfortunately, the car did not return to normal. I'm currently dealing with my ninth time taking this card apart and trying different sizes of thermal pads to get the perfect temperatures that I had before, but so far I've been unsuccessful. I've got some stuff in the mail coming. Hopefully we'll fix this whole situation as I, I pretty much know what it is. It's just thermal pad size. But let this be a lesson to people out there doing these copper mods to your video cards. Make sure you have every size you need as far as the thermal pads go, or make sure you know the exact size of the thermal pads that are going on there. Also, if you buy that copper mod it's, itself, make sure your, your heat sink is designed to not get in the way of the damn thing. You're going to end up with a $1,000 card that you can't play video games on. Yeah. This has been Trolls Tech. Thanks for watching me completely fail at this particular mod. I'll try to post a follow-up video if this ever gets fixed, but right now I have a card that shoots into the 90s, depending on what I've done to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Check out my other video on the 3070 copper mod where it actually worked out. Anyway, this is a troll bender. I love you people. Was that good?